in Chatelet, my dudes, and welcome to Polecat Cast number 112, where our stealthy polecats ferret out the best feels, funnies, and what the fucks to discuss Slam Bam Badger style. Buckle up, buckaroos, try to secure your sides and mind your spines. Also, maybe don't eat anything beforehand and make sure the bleach is locked up tight. Today's polecat panel consists of the big half of Big and Robot, Scott, the silverback self-aware simian, Max Derrett, Simpsons kin, and definitely not the Dr. Wily Yellow Devil boss from the first Mega Man game. He was always a favorite of mine. Polecat Punish Punster and Pussycat Punisher Hannah, Dr. Random Cam, Panda, Puppet Master, and Long Range Rhetorician, and me, your host, the Doge in Charge. Today we'll be discussing the following topics. The Libertarian Progress Party of Norway voted to ban cutting the peni of young Vikings below the age of 16. However, there are some in the Jewish community of Norway who strongly disagree. Netflix has no problem hosting feminist films like Misrepresentation, The Mask You Live In, Bill Nye Saves the World, and the newest Snorefest comedy specials by Amy Schumer and Eliza Schillinger. Hell, they even changed the way films are rated and reviewed on Netflix after Amy's latest flop-tastic cringe fest. So why aren't they hosting The Red Pill, despite how successful it's been? The internet tumor known as everyday feminism, or weaponized first world problems, is in financial trouble and may not survive the month of May. Can they be saved? Should they be saved? If you think your life sucks, try having to kill one of your own children because they have become a tool of a group that you despise and there is nothing that you can do to stop it. Sounds terrible? Well, that is what is happening to Matt Fury, creator of Boys Club, and by extension, Pepe the Frog. Matt has killed Pepe off in an effort to try to stop him from being used by Kekistanis, but you may not realize that as a symbol, as a symbol, he can be incorruptible. He can be everlasting. And finally, our bonus story for the patron-only after show. With the explosion of discussions around the problems with feminism as well as the heightened awareness of issues facing men and boys, it would come as no surprise that other folks would try to create media surrounding the men's movement. Enter a dramedy entitled Welcome to the Men's Group, where director and writer Joseph Culp, who, dis who himself is a member of a men's group, attempts to share his thoughts and feelings on the concept of men's groups and the issues that he feels are important regarding men. The important question is, is he actually red-pilled, or is this another one of those films that claims to care about men, while all the while blaming them for their lot in life? Anyway, if you would like to participate in our after shows, either in, as an audience member or a participant, please consider becoming a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash honeybadgerradio. Now, before I get into the stories and hand it off to Max, there are some things that I want to share. Firstly, I have a shill. There is a man that is trying to get custody of his daughter, and he is currently uh, at $170 out of a $50,000 goal on his GoFundMe page. It may seem like it's pretty steep, but he's already spent a great deal on this custody battle. So I'm going to read to you the... Um, the summary that he has written on his page, okay? I need help to keep fighting for custody of my daughter. I've already spent over $20,000 and now I am almost at the end of all my money. I only want to help raise my daughter. I want to be a father, not a daddy daycare. The mother withholds our daughter from me for long periods of time. I wanted to get 50-50 custody, but by law, one parent must be the main carer so that the other can only get a maximum of five out of the 14 days and I would be happy to take five out of the 14. I just want to be involved with raising my daughter. Her mother gets legal aid, but I can't. Yet I don't earn enough to be able to keep the court proceedings going. I would really love a chance to give my daughter the best start in life. Dads are just as important as moms. Thank you for consideration. Cheers, Ryan. So I'm spreading the word here. I already put a link to this in the low bar. Uh, for those of you guys who are interested in donating, please do. If you can't, then just share it around. Share it on your social media, share it with other people, just let them know this is going on. Maybe we can help this guy out. There is a website that I was just made aware of called Spreadshirt. Spreadshirt.com makes custom t-shirts. Um, we happen to be looking around there and we found, to, to my hilarity, uh, to, well, dude, I thought this was fucking great, an entire section on nothing but Pepe t-shirts. And it appears that Spreadshirt has no issue with making these available, despite, well, the news that we're going to be talking about today. 
but these are not just like you know common um, Pepe's. There are actually some quite rare ones on here. Some of which you would think would not be found on a T-shirt website, such as this one, which I absolutely love. It's called Meme Wars Veteran 2015-2016 Operation MAGA, and uh, I believe there's. Well, I love this the dancing frog there. So I'm just showing this vote Pepe one is good. There's a MAGA hat one. There's a He-Man one that's pretty cool. So if you guys want some Pepe shirts, if you want to like, you know, uh, show your your support for uh, Kekistan, there's even some that have flags in them. Uh, go to Spreadshirt.com and look up Pepe, and see if there's any that you want. Not this here come that boy shirt though. That doesn't belong there. But there's a lot. I love this one. The pipe. See si no no es pas nun Pepe. Well, this is not a Pepe. It isn't, but it is. Anyway. So I thought that I would share that with you guys, and maybe you want to like get yourself a shirt. Seems like Scandinavia is still capable of making good decisions. This past weekend, Norway's Libertarian Progress Party voted to ban male circumcision below the age of 16. Now, if this measure becomes policy, it would prevent the Jewish and Muslim population from performing the act. <clears throat> Previously, a compromise motion was proposed that would have prevented state funding for circumcision, but not the act itself, but that failed in winning support, which sort of makes sense. The leader of the Progress Party, Siv Jensen, said she was not in favor of an outright ban and also invoked her party's support for Israel to try and quell the fears of the country's Jewish community, which, by the way, get this, is only 1,300. Yeah. This was not enough for Irvin Cohn, who is a Jewish community leader in Norway, and he believes that these discussions send a signal that, of course, the Jewish community is unwelcome in the country. Last Saturday, Cohn tweeted for Norwegian voters to support, quote, any other party in the upcoming September elections. And on top of this, Rabbi, uh, I'm not, <laughs> I was just going to try and do it like Scott did before, but I won't. <laughs> Rabbi Menachem it? Margolin. Do, do you want to give it a shot, Scott? Menachem Margolin? There you go. You mean Rabbi? Rabbi Menachem McCollum? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the you general guys... director of the European Jewish Association, the one and the same, yeah. <laughs> if only you guys heard what happens before the show. Let's <laughs> <laughs> dial, it, dial, it, dial it down a little bit. Um... <laughs> uh, hold, hold on. Sorry, I'm almost done. The general uh, Rabbi Menachem Margolin, the general director of the European Jewish Association, called on Israel to intervene in this issue, and he echoed Cohn's sentiments that this motion was supposedly a deliberate attempt to exclude Jews from life in various European countries. Filmmaker and director Cassie J's documentary, The Red Pill, has seen astronomical success since its release in July, or July, October of 2016. With in-theater screenings still going strong, Jay happily reports that digital sales of her documentary are doing equally well. On YouTube, The Red Pill has held the number one top-selling spot in Canada and number four in the U.S. beating up movies such as Guardians of the Galaxy and Rogue One, a Star Wars story. With similar success on other mainstream platforms such as Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, many have asked Jay when the documentary will be arriving at Netflix. Unfortunately, for reasons unknown, Netflix has decided against adding The Red Pill to their platform. A strange move to be sure as the documentary has garnered much positive feedback and has been financially success successful on other similar platforms. Speculation runs rampant as to the reason behind Netflix's decision, but with, without knowing, excuse me, with nothing but silence from them, those reasons remain uncertain. Regardless of the bad news with Netflix, Jay remains a class act, stating, I know this may upset some of you who have been patiently waiting to watch The Red Pill on Netflix, but rather than responding directly to Netflix, please instead thank these companies that have decided to include The Red Pill movie on their platforms. Everyday Fe Feminism has launched an emergency fundraiser to prevent them from going under. We're from the same beautifully resilient, unjustly marginalized communities that we create our content for. Please, the Everyday Feminist team, Shutting down now? Not at a time when unapologetic white supremacists are in power. They have put out an emergency fundraiser for $50,000, saying they may need to shut down these funds without these funds by the end of May. As a reminder, Everyday Feminism has provided the world with such classics as 
three reasons why logic is irrational. I think. Oh, that's them. <laughs> yes, everyday feminism. Oh, these guys are retarded. Um, <laughs> <laughs> think it's hashtag not all men. These four facts will prove that you're just plain wrong. And twelve reasons why there's orgasm inequality along with their standard pieces reminding every group but women and minorities, except the thin ones, of their privilege. <laughs> As pointed out by Age of Shitlords, Everyday Feminism's viewership has been at an all-time low, with much of the page views probably coming from anti-feminists who share their content in order to criticize it for the lols and kecks. Would it be a sad 2017 in losing this lol cow? <laughs> Save the lol cows! Pepe the Frog, 2000, or 2005 to 2017. Pepe the Frog lived a life that was long, illustrious, and often controversial. Beginning life in 2005 as a character in Matt Fury's comic Boys Club, Pepe was soon picked up by 4chan and enjoyed nothing more than photoshopping the lovable cartoon frog into all types of situations. As the meme of Pepe the Frog grew and expanded, so did his, so did his reach. Breaking free of fortune. Jesus Christ, I can't talk today. My tongue is fat. Blah, 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 blah. Break it, yes. Blah, blah, blah. Lion face. Ah, lemon face. Uh, breaking free of 4chan, Pepe made his way into the normies. <laughs> Facebook and Twitter, where they, too, accepted the strange frog and his even stranger memes. Between June of 2015 and November of 2016, as the great meme war raged on, <laughs> Pepe found use predominantly by the supporters of Donald Trump. While the great majority of Pepe's memes are, by internet standards, relatively benign, Pepe and his memes were also used by trolls pretending to be white supremacists. So convincing were the, these trolls that members of the media, the Anti-Defamation League, and even the Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton <laughs> believed that Pepe was a symbol of the alt-right and of white supremacy. While the rest of the... <laughs> While the rest of the internet shared a hearty laugh over the situation, Pepe the Frog creator and Hillary Clinton supporter, Matt Fury, could not be more distraught over the turn of events. After Fury urges... Excuse me. After Fury's urges... Fury's... Fury's yeah, urge, Fury's okay. urges. Yeah. Fury's urges to create and share nice Pepe fell on deaf ears. Fury took matters into his own hands and killed off Pepe as part of the comic released on Free Comic Book Day in 2017. While well, certain sub subsections of the internet mourn his loss, let's be frank here for a moment. Pepe isn't real. Pepe is an anthropomorphic frog turned internet meme and therefore cannot actually die as he was never really alive to begin with. <laughs> However, the meme of Pepe the Frog will live on for as long as it remains relevant, <clears throat> as is the nature of memes themselves. And if current predictions hold, the meme of Pepe, Fro Pepe the Frog may just outlive us all. We're going to get out of here uh, and do the after show topic, which I guess I'll show it off. Um, there is a documentary called, or not a documentary, I'm sorry. It's a new film that was recently released called Welcome to the Men's Movement. Or the, I'm sorry, to the Men's Group. It's called Welcome to the Men's Group. And we're going to look at this article that talks about it. Um, I can't tell if it is woke or not, or red-pilled or not. But I, I have a suspicion that it isn't. So we're going to look at it, though, in the after show. If you want to join us in the after show and you're already a patron, well, you know what to do. If you're not, then what are you waiting for? Become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash honeybadgerradio. It's the only way to fly. Scott, did you want to say more thing. something? One more thing. Michael Keller in the chat reminded me. Captain Kirk is from Iowa, so he's an American treasure. He is. So Captain Kirk, that. the character, is true. That's right. Captain That's Kirk. Right. Thank you, Michael. Appreciate you having my back, friend. <clears throat> all right, so let's. Uh, we should probably get out of here. So thanks to all of my co-hosts for coming on. Thanks to the people who helped do with the write-ups. Um, and thank you guys for watching.